Morning, Dom. Morning, Rick. Morning, you lot. You're watching the Two Fuels. No, <laughs> no cuts this week. <laughs> Right then, Dom, what car are we driving this week? We're in a Mini GP1. A Mini... GP1. Mini Cooper S, John Cooper Works, GP1. It's a Mini GP1. GP1. Thank you, let's right, go. Right, let's do one. <laughs> We're stuck here, it's not used to driving those. Wow, it moves and everything. Manual gearbox. Weird, weird, weird. So, Mini Cooper S, John Cooper Works, GP1, the shortest car title ever. GP1. Lent to us by our friend Imran. You'll find uh, his Instagram tag here, there, popping up on the screen. Somewhere. Check him out. There's a proper camera hoa. Oh, he's he a likes. proper camera hoer. Check out, his, check out his Instagram account. Yeah, in fact, he he's likes, got several. He likes, uh, he likes a good photos. So, yeah, Mini Cooper GP1. How many of these were made, Dom? It's about 2,000. 2,000 of these were made, yeah. Do you, know, do you know where they were made? Something. Where were they made, Dom? <laughs> where were they made, Dom? They were actually made in Italy. In Italy, really? Yeah. yeah okay. Bertone made them. I okay. That's how you pronounce it. Is it Bertone? Uh, Bertone? A bit on there. I mean, you pronounce most things different to most other people, so. Oh, yeah. Do you know what colour they are? The colour, they all are. Yeah. The colour are they all done? Well, they were all white to begin with. Yeah. And now they're all thunder grey. In all fairness, if you can see any footage from this car while we're out today, it's going to look thunder grey irrelevant because the weather's horrific at the moment. It's, um, it's not ideal. If you can hear, hear a weird scraping noise, it's not uh, Dom's arse on the seat, it is obviously the windscreen wiper's having a bit of a... Yeah. So yeah, thunder grey. Um, there's about 450, I think, came to the UK. I don't think um, there's that, I don't think there's that don't many think left. There's that I don't left. Don't think there's that many left though. But a few ditch finders. I think there has been a few ditch been finders. A few ditch finders. <laughs> so yeah, we are uh, out in. It's a bit of a an old school, modern day old school car. We, we can't describe this as. Would you? Would you say, Dom? I like the fact that it winds like. I was going to say my wife, but I better not do that. Uh, it winds, and you can hear the whine in the cab, and it sounds good. Well, let's start off with the. Um, the looks on this car, Dom. Oh, then this Mini Cooper is a—it's a pretty cheeky-looking little car. It looks, the, it looks like a race car. It does look like a little race car. So, so I believe they threw um, they threw a bit of a full-on body kit, which for the times, I guess, coming out of the max max power area wasn't full-on body kit, but moving into the modern day area. It's well, a it's, bit of a, it's it's under Type R before under Type R came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, so it's got um, it's got a more more front. aggressive front end. Yeah. It's got the skirts on the side of it. And it's got a real carbon wing. It's got a real carbon wing on the back. It's got a real carbon And guess, guess what it's got? What? Real vents. Real vents. So that's because of the... Supercharger. Supercharger. So it's yeah. got a proper supercharger. So yeah. again, this is when we said um, a few weeks ago, my Mini Clubman with its fake vents, it was there because of the styling of this car with its superchargers. So, so as a... As a as outside of this car, it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool, pretty aggressive looking little, little car. It sits pretty well. It sits low. The car itself is low. What about the, what about the wheels and tyres, Dom? Well, the wheels and tyres are nice, aren't they? I don't even know what size they are, if I'm being honest. I How bad is that? See, that is bad for you, Dom. <laughs> bad that for me, yeah. That is bad for you, Dom. So oh, these, these, came with a, these came with a 205 tyre on them. Oh, right, okay. As you know this, As standard. Right. Oh, I've been doing my homework. I've been in trouble the past couple of weeks. This came with the 205 tire on a standard, but uh, but everyone, the owners put a 215 tire on this to just give it a little bit more grip. So there you go. So wheels, I'm not the biggest fan of a four-spoke wheel. They're almost up there with the 1990s three-spoke wheels that came out at one point. Ford Fiesta RS turbos. Oh yeah, uh, they, were yeah. A, they, they were a definite. They were a bit of a naff three three or spot a, wheels. Or if we're going to go real retro, Pepper Pots from XR2s. Oh, I like the Pepper Pots. I have yeah. them on my XR2. What about yeah. the Wolf Race? I don't know. I, I just kind of three spokes, four spokes look a bit odd. They suit this car, but that's maybe one of those. You know when you've seen a car that often, 
you get used to it. Yeah, but they were a factory. It's a bit they like were, me looking a, at your face. Okay, then that's fair enough. Then. They were a, they were a factory option that came with the car that were lighter than the standard wheel. Um, I think if you pulled one off, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised how light they are. If you did what, sorry? If you pulled one off. You'd be what? <laughs> you'd be pleasantly surprised. Okay. <laughs> I like weight wheels on the car. Um, I say I'm not... I don't know. I, I think they look cool on the car. I'm just not the biggest fan of the force boat, me personally. But they do look cool on the car. Yeah, there's no other option to pawn on those, are you? No, all, I, you're gonna, all you're going to do is just kill the value of the car. If yeah, you start yeah, 100%. Around oh, yeah, I mean, this, is, this car should be kept either OEM or OEM plus at the end. No. Yeah. Messing around with it, no anything no. else with it, done. Real carbon? Well, let's move on to the interior. Yeah. We've got um, we've got one glaring van. <laughs> yeah. We've got one glaring van in front of us. We've got one glaring emission from this interior that that uh, you might spot or everyone knows about. It's got no um, no back seats. It's got no back seats. No back seats. So part of the um, part the, of the weight saving. The allure. Of having the allure, nice word. Yeah. Um, well, I said that's the word for today. Allure. The allure of having no back seats means that you can get <laughs> loads of shopping in the boot, though. To be fair. So part of the yeah, part of the um, is this car practical? Um, yeah. It kind, of is, it kind of is moderately practical. Well, it's not trying to be anything but a, a sporty or arch, and they succeed in everything they want to do. It's so it's good. So if the, if you took this car as being um. Is this going to be a daily car or is this going to be a, a B-road blaster at a weekend? I so think if, it would definitely be a B-road blaster. So if you if you look at it from two from the two aspects, if you looked at it from being a daily car, it could be a daily. It's a little bit stiffly sprung, but it's quite compliant. So the ride's fine with it. The ride the but ride is, is nice. It's a, there's, it's it's bang on. Looking around for sort of storage, there's little cubby holes down the side. Yeah, they kind of work. Glove box gone. Glove box is kind of gone. So, yes, there's a shelf to put stuff on, but you're not going to be keeping anything in there. And then storage in the back, well, you can put as much as you want in there that'll fit in a mini, but realistically, it's not that practical as a daily, is it? As a B-Row blaster, at a weekend, big box tick. Lots of your boxes ticked. Big, big a box Agreed. Tick. So from, a, from an inside point of view, seats, Comfy, yeah. Recaros, yeah, they are the factory Recaros, and they're really, really nice. So yeah, Recaros are like super comfy. They're not, um, they're not going to pin you in. <coughs> no, they're not. Uh, they're, they're not comfy. full. They're not full race seats, but they are nice. There's enough of. There's enough about them to support you. So all the touch point in this steering wheel. You've had a bit, bit of a drive earlier on, Dom. You like this steering wheel? You were like pulling some proper nice. Oh, oh, oh. I like a good steering. It is, an, it is a nice steering wheel. Good size. It's. Feels, almost, feels good. Almost flat bottom. Quality leather. Yeah, it's got a little flat bottom. Yeah, actually, a little yeah. flat bottom. We like a flat bottom. Quality leather on it. Um, it's got just enough buttons on there to deal I, with what you need to know. But I don't, I don't like buttons on a steering wheel. But no, but no fussing around. So I'm saying it's a pretty chilled out, pretty relaxed kind of steering wheel. Well, it's um, back to basics, isn't it? It's like, from what it's supposed to be, it ticks that box that you can drive it and not be distracted by a million buttons like you see on modern day cars. I mean, I think you look at a, a new Mercedes or a new Audi and I think there's probably more buttons on that than the entire cabin of what's on this car. So PlayStation generation. Yeah, PlayStation exactly. generation. Exactly, whereas yeah. this is going back to... Um, old people. <laughs> it's not old people. This is just... <laughs> this is a generation before tech took over. Um, there's enough bits in here to keep you happy, but this is a driving... This is a driving car. This is a let's go out for a drive. I'm going to get up at five o'clock on a Sunday morning and I'm going to go out for a drive before the roads get busy. What else have you got inside, Dom? You like um you're happy in this one because there's a central binnacle now. Well, it's, yeah, because it's, it's like, to me, that's how the Mini should have always been. They, they have that that view of that rev counter there, which is where you want it to be. I mean, it's very similar to what it is in the my car. Um, and I like the, the fact that you can actually see what you're doing. I think you need it more because of your driving a manual. So, you know, and you have to use 
you have to use gears and you have to make it sing and you can look at the rev count when you're making it sing and it, and it winds nicely. So yeah, central binnacle in there, the big um, big speedo in the middle, um, sat navs. Non-existent. No sat nav in here. Um, yeah, use your phone. Yeah. Use your phone. Um, yeah, I think it's just a, it's a, it's a well-built inside of the car. Steering position's pretty good. Um, I like sitting a little bit low. Steering wheel's up nice and tight. It's good. So what else, uh, what else do you want to have a little chat about on the interior, Dom? This real carbon. This, this real carbon is nice. I like it. It looks good though, don't it? It's not real carbon, but it looks good. It suits the car. It suits the car completely. Yeah. I like the fact that the number is everywhere on the car to what it belongs to. Well, that was something, so, again, specific to this car, wasn't it? Every car got its individual number. So it's on the roof, it's on the dash. It's on the front as well, where the scoop is. It is on the front of the scoop as well. Well spotted, Dom. Oh, Attention to detail, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I like it, it's good. So yeah, it's um, it's a very individual, this is your specific vehicle, off you go. It's well done, you asking, Dom, do you want to drive yet? Because the weather's crap. <laughs> I'm not bothered, I'm crap. You're bothered at the moment. I'm quite happy sired, <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, we'll deal with that in a bit. <laughs> That's a little note from my behalf that the uh, turning circle's pretty crap. The turning circle's, the turning circle's crap. pretty crap. In the, free, but, in the Freelander turning circle's better than this. Well, I don't think so. it's going to stop you from buying one, is it? You don't kind of get in the car and go, no, it's not for me, that turning circle's no good. It's lights, I know he's done something, I know the. I know the lights on this are different than a standard light and really? I, I think they're an option because I watched a video before we did this okay. and the guy who's doing the video actually gives Imran a shout on the video. I don't know what it was called. I know what Imran's called but I don't know what the guy doing the video was called. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I might be wrong about going full nerdy that because it's got the HID lights it has an extra washer bottle for the lights. What's that dump, sorry? I know. Because it's got some special headlights. Yeah, it's an extra washer bottle. It's got an extra washer bottle. I think so, yeah. Right, well, don't, that I'm sure, a new string to I'm your, sure, I'm sure to your somebody, bow this week. I'm sure somebody will, will, will call me out on that if it's not true. But cool. I think it's, uh, I think that's, we, can, we can lift up the, the bonnet and have a look at the engine. It's a good little wine, that, isn't it? It's great, isn't it? It's a great little, little, wine. little wine. I tell you what we do need to talk about. What are we uh, So when we get when we get in the boot, uh, Imran, the owner, has decided that he doesn't really need all the boot space for his shopping. Because in all fairness, he doesn't go shopping. So he's managed to bang a massive subwoofer in the boot. Has it? Oh, yeah, yeah. That does sound good. There's a big old subwoofer in the boot oh, and, right, okay. and an amp shoved in there. So we'll have a look at that when we oh, pop the boot in a minute. Cool. So it's a hark to the, um, to the mid noughties when we all drove around with subs in the boot. I did. Amp sat in there. I done, did. So still would do now if my wife had let me. As we've said, this is a this is a B-row blaster car. This is nothing else. But you know, there's a lack of a there's a lack of an armrest. In, yeah, in there, here, is, there is a lack of an armrest. Isn't there? Uh, it's quite okay. unusual to be fair. But it's a, it's a weight saving. Yeah. And they, they've pulled. I see they've pulled a little bit of uh, pockets have gone. That's what I mean. Door cards they've Every, gone, haven't they? Everything's kind of. Everything's had a little bit of a shave. So the weight of these came in at around about 1,100, 1,200 kilograms. Yeah. So it's pretty light. That's it's without us sat in the car. Without us sat in the car, exactly. Uh, it's got a 1.6 supercharged engine sat under there, producing... 220-ish? 215? 220, yeah, 215, 220 brake horsepower. Um, I think that's it's enough, it's enough for what this is. Well, this is a this is a 0 to 60 in about six and a half seconds. But well, that's not what this car's about, really. This this no, car's not, not a. It's not stabbed rat quick in a straight line, but certainly rat quick. Well, if you've ever stabbed a rat, you know how to move. I <laughs> I'd agree. That looks like a fun activity going out for a walk. So yeah, yeah it's lovely weather out there. So yeah, 0 to 0 to 60 is not what this car's about in a straight line. This is about. Hitting the twisty stuff and, and having a bit of fun and having some fun, yeah. Mm. Do you want to drive yet, Dom? <laughs> no. Still don't want to drive. <laughs> oh, the weather's the weather's terrible today. But anyway, oh, what we're we going to do? We're going to find a little layby. We'll pull up. We'll grab a quick coffee, and then uh, I'm going to force Dom into the driver's seat. <laughs> GTO. 
this one. Look at GTR. Look at GTR. How have we got for that? Because the speedo moves with the, the steering column and the GTR does that on the little happy face, Tom. It's nice, that. I like oh, it's little, like a GTR. I like the little happy face. Oh. Right then, so uh, Dom's in. Dom didn't really want to drive today, bizarrely. Normally he's like, can I drive? But the weather's been that, um, it's been that rubbish today. Um, yeah, so, so Dom's in. Oh, it sounds good, this. I like this. So the, um, yeah, it's good for the weather's pretty dire outside and there are plenty of people deciding the great British way of things to let's go for a day out. Like with his family walking earlier. Oh, it's like 40 mile an hour winds, That's absolutely tipping it down with rain. This dude here, just on the little jog. Come for a little jog, he's gonna be there quite a while, yeah? It's a long hill this. <laughs> right, I've driven now, do you want to drive? <laughs> Do you not want to drive anymore, Dom? <laughs> no, it's like... <laughs> the weather is, and I don't think this is swearing, is it? The weather's a bit tits up here. It's, not it's, really a, nice it's a touch on the foggy side. We can probably see about 30 foot, yeah, 50 it's not, foot. It's not, it's not what you would class as ideal. It's not conducive for, um, is it fun? But is it fun? Yeah, it's definitely fun. It is. Well, I'm, I'm grinning. I'm, all, I'm not going that quickly, to be fair. I just think it's just, it sits well. And it goes around corners really, really good, and you can actually feel what the front wheels are doing. Plus, it's got a diff in it as well, which helps the car go around the corner. And uh, to be fair, with the power that it's running, there's not really a massive amount of torque steer. So it sort of goes where you want it to go, as opposed to where the car wants to go. And I think that makes it a more fun environment to play in. Balloon. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. So what, um, as we've got a nice little Clio going past, yeah. what, what would be, um, what would be a comparable car to this, Dom? This, this came out before the Renault R26 slash R26R, which also stripped out the rear seats. And that was a bit of a weapon, weren't it, as well? a bit of a full-on cage in there, didn't they? That was a bit of a weapon, but how oh dear is the new one? And, and what, where are they going with this? I like think Renault, what, 75 I think Renault, grand. Yeah, I think Renault kind of, as you put it, been sniffing glue. <laughs> lost the plot. I think Renault have definitely lost the plot. I mean, you look at. I mean, it's really all, all in suspension and everything. It's proper settled, but 75k for a McGann. Come on. So when we, we spoke a couple of weeks ago about the uh, BMW M4 GTS and that being kind of overpriced for what it is. Yes, it's a weapon, but yeah, it's overpriced. And then Renault have gone, well, if they can do it, we're going to have a go. Turn around the exit, I know we can. Oh, yeah, you're right. There's absolutely oh, wow, there's Christ. zero <laughs> turning Jesus. circle on this, yeah? Jesus Christ. How, how, good, how good's that? Wow. Crikey, this is not made for, for, mother, for, for mother to turn around in car park, is it? Jesus. So we've already discussed that this uh, this is a 0 to 60 of six and a half seconds, but that's not what it's about. But it goes fast enough, yeah, Dom? Yeah, it does. You figured out how to launch it, yeah? <laughs> um, you have to press. Well, there's nothing to press. This is a little bit uh, old school. I like it. A little bit in the days when this was um, dip the clutch, put it in first, build the reds a little bit. <laughs> Spinning. I don't think we can launch this, not in this weather. No. So this car, 0 to 60, six and a half seconds, it's not what it's about, but it's a fun car to drive. Sadly, with the weather as bad as it is today, we can't really push this car. But we know from having driven it uh, before the rain came, it was good fun. Clutch. Clutch. How's the clutch done? Clutch as ever. <laughs> yeah, definitely clutch as ever. It's pretty similar to the Peugeot 205 GTI 1.9. I was AM. just going to say 1.6 or 1.9. That's what the geeks do. Always a 1.9. Everybody used to go on about the 
GTI 1.6 was better balanced, blah de blah de blah de blah, 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 blah. Everybody wanted a 1.9. Well, it's just, it was, it had the better wheels on it. Not <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm the fickle one who normally does stuff like that. Had the better wheels better on it. better wheels on it. Oh, it looked better. It did, it was like, that was what you wanted. Everybody wanted a 1.9. And what, I, si what size wheels were on that then, Doc, do not I think they were probably 15 or 16 inch. They were 15 inch. inch wheels, which back in the day were like... They were monsters, weren't they, back in the day? Wow, wee. Whereas nowadays, if you put a 15 inch wheel on a car, you just get laughed at. We've been out of this car today, Dom. Granted, the weather's been pretty... Um, it's been difficult. It's not been ideal testing conditions no, it's for a, it's the a, vehicle. It's a long way from Monaco or the Alps in the summer. Yeah, I mean, this car would be pretty mega on the cold terrain. Oh, this car would be built yeah, for the cold that would, yeah. that would be fun to be... Yeah, that little, would be... Little tight, twisty mountain pass rather than... Uh, yeah, but the turning circle wild. might be a problem. <laughs> yeah, true, actually. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine this on Stelvio? It would be good fun. <laughs> What's the turning circle like, Dom? I've been in trucks with better turning circles than this. Oh, that's nice. I do like them. M2s, M2 yeah, comps. Oh, yeah. I do like them. They tick so many boxes. Talking about ticking boxes, we could do with people to uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring a ding the bell, yeah? Please, that would be nice. Ring a ding the bell. If you could do that for us, that would be nice. It does uh, help us out. So, yeah, thanks very much for that. But apart from that, because we're not in uh, France or uh, Switzerland or, slash Italy, or, or Italy. Yeah. Would you would you own this car? And this is not just a yes or no. This is a this car's cracking to look at. I, I would own this car. It's, yeah. a bit, it's a bit worrying really because I am quite looking for a bit of a another car to get. And you know, the S1 needs to go, and we need to have a bit of a change. And, this, um, is that the S1 we're going to feature on the channel in a couple of weeks? Yeah, I think it is, yeah. So is there going to be a full sale advert at the end of the video? Possibly, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this definitely is it's nice. It's far more Aurora, even though it's probably not as quick. Um, and it's probably a bit more interesting. So it looks cool. It goes well. It handles well. It's reasonably practical. And as, a, as an all-in-all, yeah, I think this is a car that I would own. I think so. I'll buy one. I won't make sense that is it's, it's on the list. Oh, I can't just get some kind of buckle and buggy just across that hill there. <laughs> <laughs> so do you need to um, have a quick chat with him around about uh, part ownership, car ownership, full ownership? I do part ownership. Part ownership? Yeah. Although my son does want to buy a car um, a Celica GT4. No, he doesn't. He does. He does. He wants a Celica GT4. Have you driven one? No. Do you not like them? Have you? Well, no, but they just look pretty cool, though, don't they? Well, they do look pretty cool, but you know, all our conversations are those old cars. You know what they're going to be? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you don't want one, do you, really? What you want is you want one. You want a nice glass fronted garage to park the car in and go, look what I've got. And everyone goes, they're cool, mate. What the line? You go, <laughs> So you know you don't want them.